All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. January twenty fourth, Phil DeFranco show. Um, I what I dubs Marisha Ray and Creator Clash two exposes Taylor Swift, Ticketmaster, anti hero, M and M's, and more. M and what's up with the M and M's? Let's uh, find out, Sean. The truth about iDubbbz, Creator Clash 2, and the fight he offered me? Breaking down the Taylor Swift Ticketmaster dumpster fire hearings today. The real reason right. eggs are so dang expensive right now. My response to the M&M's controversy. More horrible news out of California we have to talk about. We've got all of that and so much more on today's brand new Philip DeFranco show. So buckle up, hit that like button, let's just jump into it. This announcement today has me more excited than I've been in a while. iDubbbz and Anissa's Creator Clash just announced Creator Clash 2. They showed the full card. It's happening in April, and it's amazing. And this is how I want all the creator boxing events. All creators. Like, it was interesting at first, but I'm not buying Jake Paul pay-per-views. And the events that KSI are doing, I think, are actually much more interesting. Though I really would like to see him fight someone where it was, like, it seems somewhat evenly matched, like when he and Logan fought. It feels like he's just been kind of doing cakewalks, and I mean that with no disrespect. I couldn't do that. But Creator Clash is set up like the old school ones. It's a bunch of creators, and you have literally no idea who's gonna do what. And there are a number of friends of this show actually on this card. Right, so here's the full setup, and let's talk about some of the individual ones. Dad versus Starkiller. That's gonna be interesting. AB seems allergic to the idea of trying to take on an easy fight. Myth versus Hundar. Micah versus Alana Pierce. Alana, if you no win, idea who these people are. Only three people know that reference. Aaron Hansen versus Jarvis Johnson. Leon Hart versus Crank Gameplays. Marisha Ray going from D and D to you versus me. Harley in there looking jacked. I wonder if he's gonna lie about his weight this time. And there's more, but the main event is Alex Wasabi versus I Dubs. Which I say this with no disrespect, because this event is supposed to be about good vibes. But my money's on I Dubs. The fact that he's able to stand toe to toe with Doctor Mike after really only taking up the sport somewhat recently. And with that size difference, I think he's going to show off here, and I'm willing. I have no idea who those those uh, creators are. The only one that I know of is Marisha Ray from D and D, um, from not D and D from uh, Critical Role. I, I wouldn't even call it D and D actually. At some point, at some point in time, um, which I've gone into talk about D and D, but I mean, if they if they have fans, go. But like, I don't. Willing to put money on. Right, also, for, with this announcement, uh, I have gotten a number of people saying, Phil, why are you not on this card? To which I would say two things here. The first He's not an idiot. I'm very clear about the only two people that I would be willing to box. Ethan Klein or Belle Delphine. Because I feel like I have an equal chance against both of them. And two, despite making this very clear publicly, Ian actually did offer me a fight. I don't want to blow up his spot, so I'm texting him right now to see if he's okay with me publicly mentioning this. But he asked if I would be willing to fight Logan Paul's dad. Which is easily the weirdest thing I've been asked in 10 years. It is the epitome of a lose-lose. That is a person that will either kill me in the ring or if I saw somehow one uh, kill me after because let me be clear I may have lost weight but that hasn't turned into strength yet I'm not even a month <laughs> into weight training I got like these baby uh, muscles and I may be the least coordinated person on the planet so no to that fight and 99% of the fights that would be offered my superpower in life is knowing where I'm not good and or am outmatched but that said I that and also he the Franco shows a modicum of intelligence um, doing these fights there is no upside, honestly, really, to do them. Um, you'll just get damage to your body or anything like that for, what, uh, like 30 seconds of fame? It's not really worth it. There's no point. And then you also have to deal with all the damage afterwards. It's not worth it. I cannot like, wait in the slightest. Clash too. And for those that are looking forward to this, which fight are you looking most forward to? And then there's not much that Democrats and Republicans can actually agree on. But one thing they did agree on today is fuck Ticketmaster. And that's how you really know you messed up. Because you could ask Congress, like, what color is the sky? And Democrats would say, well, it looks blue. And Marjorie Taylor Greene would say, it's deep state lizard people green. And it was made that way by Jewish space lasers. You know, what centrists would call equally reasonable answers. But this Ticketmaster news did get a lot of attention today. Because today there was a Senate Hearing into Live Nation and Ticketmaster following the absolute disaster of the pre sale for Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. Right, you might remember we talked about it. The site was crashing. Yeah. Cats were grabbing seats. Ticket prices were surging. Sales were getting delayed, getting canceled. Anything and everything that could go wrong. Well, sure. did. It's like going up to $50,000 for tickets. I'm like, that is like $60,000 way too much. Because that's actually ridiculous. It was just greed. Ticketmaster has largely blamed bot attacks coupled with unprecedented demand. Also, at one point, seemingly suggesting it was because Taylor had gone too long without touring. We had tons of people rejecting this explanation, saying Ticketmaster needs to take more blame here. This including Senator Richard Blumenthal, who said during today's hearing, May I suggest respectfully that Ticketmaster ought to look in the mirror and say, I'm the problem. 
it's me. Richard, why? I'm gonna pull a muscle roll in my eyes this hard. Although, in his defense, though, the whole hearing was full of senators speaking Taylor Swift lyrics into their statements. And this may have actually been the least cringy one. To be honest, I had hoped, um, uh, as of a few months ago, to get the gavel back. But once again, she's cheer captain, and I'm on the bleachers. You can't have too much consolidation, something that, unfortunately for this country, as a uh, ode to Taylor Swift, I will say, we know all too well. A lot of people seem to think that's somehow a solution. I think it's a, it's a nightmare dressed like a daydream. But going back to what's going on here... I'll what is the infatuation with Swift? I do not understand that. Like... Please, somebody, if, if you're watching this, please let me know down below what the infatuation with Taylor Swift is. I do not understand it. Not a good singer. Uh, for, wow, my brain just completely went bleh there for a second. Not a good singer. Um, she has, like, average looks, because there's a lot of people, you know, that just get famous for the looks and everything like that. What is the infatuation with, with like, I don't understand... And she's supposed to be, what, a country singer? Even though pretty much all modern-day country is not, like, good country. It's just, like, shitty shit. So, like, what is the infatuation? Honestly, like, the 100% legitimate question, what the fuck is the infatuation? I do not understand it. A lot of this whole thing is dealing with entertainment promoter Live Nation, Ticketmaster's parent company. Because the two companies merged back in 2010, and now leaders think that deal needs to be re-examined. But that also being something SeatGeek CEO Jack Gretzinger touched on while speaking at the hearing today. Number one, a lack of robust competition in our industry meaningfully stunts innovation, and consumers are who suffer. Number two, venues fear losing Live Nation concerts if they don't use Ticketmaster. And number three, the only way to restore competition in this industry is to break up Ticketmaster and Live Nation. And some reports are saying that today's hearing could actually give the Justice Department a huge chunk of political support for an antitrust suit against Live Nation. But as far as what else was said during today's hearing, you had Live Nation CFO Joe Burke told directly addressing the Taylor Swift issues, predictably placing blame on the bots. We knew bots Gosh. would attack that on sale and planned accordingly. We were then hit with three times the amount of bot traffic that we'd ever experienced, the attack requires to slow down and even pause our sales. This is what led to a terrible consumer experience, which we deeply regret. We apologize to the fans. We apologize to Ms. Swift. We need to do better, and we will do better. And adding that... From what I remember, from what he showed everything like that, no, it was absolutely fucking Live Nation and Ticketmaster's problems because they're just being greedy. Not also just them, it's also Swift's too. Like, they were just being... Greedy ass mother buggers. Um, and people people are gonna like see this, they're gonna go after Ticketmaster and Live Nation, but not after Swift. Which is absolutely stupid because the three of them share blame equally. Absolutely. Um But yeah, it in if hindsight the word Congress if Congress agrees on like I don't just split them up then. Like, things that they could have done better. To which one of my writers, Maddie, who was in those Taylor Swift trenches, responded, No fucking shit, you think? But Regarding their bot defense, you had Jerry Mickelson, the CEO of Jam Productions, dismissing Ticketmaster there, saying, You can't blame bots for what happened to Taylor Swift. There's more to that story that you're not hearing. And then explaining mm -hmm. how Ticketmaster actually benefits from its own technical failures. The process, when it's slowed down, increases the money that Ticketmaster makes because they make money on fees. And as the ticket prices go up due to dynamically priced tickets, Ticketmaster makes more to that. So it's to their advantage to slow the process down. We're saying that it creates a frenzy that allows prices to skyrocket, which is what happened during the Taylor Swift sale. Senator Marsha Blackburn also not buying the whole bot argument, pointing to the many companies and other massive industries who also deal with bots and saying, You know what? They get bot attacks every single day by the thousands. By the thousands. And they have figured it out, but you guys haven't. No, this pretty. is un believable also senator Amy well, believe are it. taking aim at other problems including a lack of transparency in ticket prices and also slamming how unaffordable live events have become now i don't think it's very easy for high school kids to make their money at baker square pie shop on the weekends so and buy tickets to these major concerts with the hearing going on for roughly three oh, hours shit. Hold on. no of course but that also that does is not just on Ticketmaster and live nation like yeah there are to default because they're at, they, they're at fault because of their prices and everything like that. But the whole um, teenagers making money and not being able to go do stuff, it's also because of fucking inflation rates. And, like, the cost of living is just, like, and... Boing, it just shot through the roof. 
Um, so that's also an issue. So it's not 100% on Ticketmaster that people can't go to uh, um, live things, but also, yeah, it, it is partially, but not 100% like they're saying. So obviously I'm not going to share everything, but I will link you to the full thing down below. Uh, warning, there are moments of cringe. But with that, I would love to know your thoughts regarding Ticketmaster and this whole mess. And then, possibly the most important news today, Eminem's had to release... <laughs> M&M's had to release an official statement. This is not a joke. They actually did this. Writing America, let's talk. In the last year, we've made some changes to our beloved spokes candies. We weren't sure if anyone would even notice. And we definitely didn't think it would break the internet. But now we get it. Even a candy shoes can be polarizing, which was the last thing M&M's wanted since we're all about bringing people together. Therefore, we have decided to take an indefinite pause from the spokes candies. In their place, we are proud to introduce a spokesperson America can agree on, the beloved Maya Rudolph. We are confident Miss Rudolph will champion the power of fun to create a world where everyone feels they belong. Now, if you're like, like, Phil, I'm behind on my candies related political news coverage. What's going on? Well, a lot of it kind of kicked off back when they made the uh, the green M&M not have those big boots anymore. Like, I don't know if you remember this. There was a time where for some reason the green M&M was like on a stripper pole and like unzipping her green shell. Because, you know, melt in your mouth, not in your hand was not a good enough innuendo for them. And actually in response to all of that, we saw a number of people, including Fox News' Tucker Carlson, essentially like, why'd you make the candies less sexy? And then around two weeks ago, M&Ms revealed new packaging. Like this one here showing three lady M&Ms. They're upside down. It's a supporting women flipping the status quo. And initially, I didn't even know if this was like a real change they were doing. And that's because there were like several other images of packaging going around that were actually fake. Things like packaging that read them and M's. And while people like myself just kind of didn't care they were doing this change, it's like, whatever. You're a candy company. It feels kind of like you're just you're just kind of grabbing yeah. the cash, but whatever. But again, this move seemed to break a number of people's brains, including Tucker Carlson again. Woke M&Ms have returned. The green M&M got her boots back. To be fair, from what I've seen, it's not easy to break his brain. All you have to do is go like, what is two times three plus four minus five? And he'll be like. So uh, to be fair, it's not that hard. Um, but as the whole them, them and them or whatever it was, fuck off. That is just. But apparently is now a lesbian, maybe. And there's also a plus sized obese purple m and So we're going to cover that. Of course. <laughs> of course. Also, I don't know, is that is the is the M&M obese or just a peanut M&M? Yeah, it's like just this, peanut. Like you can't really ignore or convince yourself that we don't live in the dumbest of times. But uh, I will say, from a marketing... How is it that we have access... We have access to a shit ton of um, knowledge and everything like that. Like, we have at our fingertips devices that we can, like, access a whole bunch of information and everything like that. Yet we're even more... Actual, if I remember the definition of this word, act were even more retarded than when we were going through the dark ages. Like, what the actual fuck? I just, oh my god. From standpoint, I am interested. Right, some are taking this news at face value. They're saying, hey, look, this is Eminem's realizing, hey, we should stay away from social issues and just be kind of funny. But then you have others yes. saying, hey, look at the timing here. This could be a marketing misdirect for some big Super Bowl ad. An ad that might make fun of people who are up in arms around these changes. Now, as far as what the truth is, I don't know. But I also don't think that I actually care. Because the core of this story is a candy company saying, hey, should we put social issues in our marketing? Will that make us more money? And then, yeah, it is funny to see people's brains explode with something that's so stupid. But yeah, ultimately, time will tell what the reality of this whole situation is. And then, if you haven't noticed... Honestly, companies like that should just stay the fuck out of social issues. Because it, it will only harm them in the long run. Um, in the short term, they might get a little bloop in sales. But in the long run, it's just going to be like, boop, boop. So, I mean, they should just stay and just, like, continue on. Cologne and perfume bottles are expensive. Like, who's spending 200 plus dollars to get bored of the scent a week later? Well, that is where Scentbird comes in. Scent Ooh. And, best of all, did I mention it costs just $17 a month? So just click my link in the it's description. It's bad. 17 bucks a month. 55% off at Scentbird. Meaning it's just a little over $7 for your first month. And it's available in the U.S. and Canada. So thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Check out the links below. And then, this is how people are flexing on Instagram right now. Because, yo, eggs is expensive. I went to Gelson's last week. I wanted to make breakfast for the kids. The Forgot fuck? I didn't have eggs. I got an 18 count of eggs. That is it. Got to the register and they said, that will be $13.79, please. I thought I was in an Irwan for 
for a second, or is it Air One? I don't know. I hate that place. It's so pretentious. It's like, hey, is Whole Foods too affordable for you? But also, even outside the bubble that is LA, eggs are fucking expensive right now. With it being common to see prices as high as $4.25 a dozen, which is over 130% higher than a year ago. Right, and as far as why, according to the USDA, the cause of this is because of the avian flu outbreak that killed tens of millions of hens. However, a farm advocacy group, Farm Action, says that's not the whole story. This isn't just the avian flu. And in a letter to the chair of the Federal Trade Commission, Farm Action urged the FTC to investigate these egg prices, claiming that the egg producers are using the avian flu outbreak as an excuse to fix and gouge prices and boost their profits. And pointing to the record sales of CalMain Foods, the leading producer in the industry, which controls 20% of the retail egg market. And Reuters reporting that CalMain reported their gross profits were up by, get ready for it, 600% lot of profits. the same quarter last year. And that's in a filing with the SEC. So Farm Action is claiming, quote, CalMain's willingness to increase its prices and profit margins to such unprecedented levels suggests foul play. Which I'm hoping there were oh. some dads on that team riding that that were like, that's a good one. But CalMain really? and others foul are going play. on Farm Action's accusations. So CalMain saying that their profits are due to the fewer eggs nationwide, driving up prices, not deliberate price gouging. And their VP and CFO saying the U.S. egg market is, quote, intensely competitive and highly volatile, even under normal normal circumstances. You know, with that, there is a Forbes report seeming to back that up, saying that the cost of eggs in this crisis is not caused by corporate greed. Instead, saying the true drivers are one. Hopefully this is an effect up here in Canada, because that would be an issue. Demand, equilibrium, a like a really big issue. Industry. And three, perhaps over a longer term, the gradual adoption of more humane egg production methods with somewhat higher costs. But Farm Action is standing firm with their accusations, saying in their letter to the FTC, in the end, what CalMain Foods and the other large egg producers did last year and seemed to be intent on doing again this year is extort billions of dollars from the pockets of ordinary Americans through what amounts to a tax on a staple we all need eggs and saying they did so without well, want not necessarily need they did think. so because there is no reasonable substitute for a carton of eggs they did so because they had the power and weren't afraid to use it well the limited comment on the situation citing their policy about letters from third parties there may actually be hope on the horizon with an expert telling cnbc that wholesale eggs are down to three dollars 40 cents a dozen which hey, isn't much cheaper and it'll still take some time to see the prices change on the shelves but at least it's something so for now we have to wait to see what happens and of course i'll ask you what are your thoughts regarding the situation and then that would be very problematic if I was living in the States. Like I said, hopefully it, it doesn't affect um, Canada. But um, if I was living in the States, oh my God, that would just... Because I can usually eat a dozen at a time. Eight to a dozen. Like eight to 12 eggs in a sitting. Um, so that would be very problematic if I actually down there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why they went so expensive, though. Even if they killed a bunch of hens, we still had way more than enough hens to be producing stuff. Greedy ass motherfuckers. All right, what's going on? Is the NYPD spying on New Yorkers? That's a question yes. that many were asking after an officer was seen holding a phone, recording video of people leaving Drake's concert at the Apollo on Saturday. With a journalist at the event filming the officer, posting it to Twitter, and boom, big reaction. People asked him why would they be doing this, wondering if the same thing happens outside of a Billy Joel concert at Madison Square Garden. People sound off saying, this doesn't look like safety, it looks like unjustified surveillance. And asking with no crime taking place here, what is the NYPD doing with the footage? You also had the Surveillance Technology Oversight Project condemning the NYPD and releasing a statement saying that the NYPD's use a video recording device on hip hop fans at a historic institution of black performance in Harlem is highly concerning. And saying this is yet another example of the NYPD's racist use of surveillance technology following the department's long legacy of targeting rap concerts. In closing, we're deeply concerned facial recognition technology may have been involved and demand the department destroy any footage it took. And saying the NYPD surveilling rap concerts that dates back to the 90s. But in response to this, the NYPD has since denied that anything nefarious was happening and releasing a statement claiming the officer was just part of a social media team and was gathering video for a post about local events. And saying the video will not be utilized for any other reason New York Mayor uh -huh. Adams um but i mean people get filmed all the time the only reason that people are getting up in arms is because the dude had um a police badge on that's all it is with camera phones or anything like that we're always under surveillance and like all that shit so it's like yeah, it's just because he was wearing a police badge that's the only reason if he was just a normal person standing there going beep uh, no one would have cared. So it's like was also defending the police saying that was a safe event it was a large event drake back at the apollo cool. and we mm -hmm. want that and adding we want our police and community involved and those who are naysayers find reason to complain about everything no matter what you do and then it's been eight months since sweden and finland applied to join nato and the standoff with turkey is still going on right turkey initially blocking their membership bid under the alliance due to the nations giving members of the pkk asylum but the three nations cut a deal where they agreed to work out their differences and for the most part finland has done everything it's needed to join turkey's objection to them is really just First. by association to sweden and with those two i mean it's been one thing after another 
another. Turkey wanted Sweden to extradite journalists, but Sweden refused. And two weeks ago, Swedish protesters hung an effigy of Erdogan, and last weekend, they burned a Quran in front of the Turkish embassy. So now Turkey says that because of that, they will not admit Sweden. And to be clear, this is strange because it's Erdogan trying to intervene in Sweden's domestic affairs in a pretty cynical way. But this now has Finland openly saying it may have to join NATO without Sweden. Now, in actuality, though, is this dispute truly about the PKK or the burning of the Quran? Well, there, there are disagreements here because it's generally believed that Erdogan's just pulling an election stunt and delaying admitting Sweden until after his May elections. And it's also believed that he's trying to leverage the U.S. into being a better ally to Turkey. But the U.S. is leveraged back by more or less threatening to not give Turkey the 70 F-16s they ordered until they admit Sweden and Finland into NATO. But a lot of this is conjecture and no one can truly know what's going on in the mind of Erdogan. And then, y'all, th there were two more ma- So is it, does it have to be unanimous? If it has to be unanimous to get into NATO, like, oh, e issue. Um, as for the reasons, I don't, I don't know. I don't know much about what's going on in Europe. If they're burning the Quran, who cares? It's a book. It's a book of mythology. Just who the fuck cares? If you're really going to stop a country from gaining security because they burned a book of fables, then there's an issue with you. Not with them, with you. Um, oh, no, there's really nothing much I can really react to. Um, it's just politics being politics. Mass shootings in California since we covered the Monterey Park attack yesterday. The first shooting happened in Half Moon Bay, a small coastal town about 30 miles out of San Francisco, where a gunman killed seven and critically injured an eighth at two different locations. Is he as far as what we officially more? know, according to authorities, police were dispatched to the first location around 2.20 p.m. and found four people shot to death and a fifth victim also suffering gunshot wounds. But shortly after, three more people found dead at another location nearby. And then about two hours later, police bang, located bang, the suspect bang, in his stop, car in the parking lot of a San Mateo stop, County stop, Sheriff's stop, Office substation stop. with a semi automatic handgun in the vehicle that officials later confirmed he had purchased legally with sheriff christina corpus saying the man was taken into custody without incident and is fully cooperating and as far as what we know about the shooter he has been identified as a half moon bay resident of asian descent police initially saying he was 67 years old but in remarks today corpus said he was 66 and while right now the motive is unknown the sheriff told reporters yesterday that both of the locations that he targeted were nurseries and it's since been reported that specifically they were mushroom farms and corpus saying during a press conference this morning all evidence we have points to this Why? being an instance of workplace violence the mountain mushroom farm the first location is where the subject was employed though adding so far the only known connection between the victims and the suspect is that they may have been co-workers and as of recording it remains unclear why he targeted the second location though regarding the mushroom farm called concord farm has told reporters that it was the site of the second shooting which a law enforcement official also confirmed to the washington post and in a statement to the media a spokesperson said the farm had no past knowledge of the alleged gunman or his possible motives and as far as the victims as of recording little has been released about them the corpus today did say they were all adults and a mixture of asian and hispanic descent some of whom were migrants. Authorities also previously saying because people both live and work on the farms, children were among those who witnessed the shooting. But then, this morning, one official walked that back, saying that while children were in the vicinity, they don't have information about specific witnesses. But regardless, this shooting, especially on the heels of the Monterey Park attack, has further devastated the Asian American community at a time when many are still celebrating the Lunar New Year. Meanwhile, also just Californians in general are reeling from all of these attacks. Because as I mentioned earlier, this wasn't the only mass shooting just yesterday. Right just hours after the violence in Half Moon Bay, seven people were injured and one other was killed during a shooting at a gas station in Oakland, with currently very little having been reported about the whole incident, but police say that the shooting was between several individuals. And also with this, right, that the fact that all these shootings have taken place in California is very significant because California is known for its strict gun laws. In fact, the nonprofit Every Town for Gun Safety ranks California number one in the country for gun law strength. And so with this, you have many top leaders from California arguing this proves the need for more federal regulation. This including Governor Gavin Newsom, who told CBS News in an interview, the Second Amendment's become a suicide pact. We'll continue to find whatever loopholes we can and continue to lead the national conversation on gun safety reform. And the data bears out. It works. It saves lives. California is 37% lower than the death rate of the rest of the nation. And yet, with all that evidence, no one on the other side seems to give a damn. I can't get anything done in Congress. And to that point, after the Monterey Park shooting, we saw California Senator Dianne Feinstein along with some other Democratic colleagues introducing two gun control bills. With President Biden also putting his support behind the measures, urging Congress to pass them. It's not going to work. I really don't see that happening. Not only because Republicans control the House, but also this is something that Biden was unsuccessfully pushing for, even when the Democrats held the House. And honestly, I really don't see this changing anytime soon because you do have to have some sort of federal law. Right? Liberal states can keep implementing gun control laws as much as they want, but when you have other states not doing a thing or even trying to roll back the current laws, and that even goes as far as the Supreme Court, which we recently saw ruling against gun control efforts in New York. But there is some good news here. It's now being reported that the government does have a surplus of thoughts and prayers to protect those in future incidents. And that brings us to the end of today's show. When we leave... Jesus. This is this is the issue with 
fucked hearts in the, in the States. I don't care if you wanna if you wanna go a whole second text the right to bear arms or not. Your founding fathers didn't think that you guys were gonna be even more stupid than they were. They would have been like, hey, you know, we have high hopes for this new country of ours, not holy fuck, what is going on with these people? Like it I can guarantee that. If if you brought them to current day, they'd just be like, Nope, we're done. We're done. We're walking away. And they just just, just leave. I just, I just fucking know it. Like it absolutely ridiculous. Um, other than that, nothing's gonna happen. Um uh, it's because people can just go out of state, grab the stuff, come in and smuggle it in. It's not gonna do anything. Um other than that, there's really not much I can say. It's uh, like I said before, I don't have any sympathy for these well, there's these um large shootings because you guys have the ability to stop them, you guys don't. Consequences have actions have consequences. Apparently I don't know how to speak tonight. Uh, actions have consequences, and you guys get to deal with consequences, so have fun with that. Um, other than that, there's really not much to say. Yeah, no, not really much to say. Other than it's late here, and I really want to go to bed, so I have to get some videos edited. Hopefully Daryl's editing some videos as, as I do this stuff. Uh, yeah, I will see you guys all tomorrow. Um, that's about it. Remember, follow me across all social media. I'm going to res across it all. I'm on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Get down. Um, I will fuck. What? Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Come join the Discord. It's a safe haven for knowledge, understanding, and all that fun stuff. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, remember to stay safe, stay healthy, stay awesome, because you guys, you're all awesome. Bye-bye.